everybody and we're back for the free cube wp i guess kind of a walkthrough slash review we're not going to be using it so much as showing off all the features uh, maybe i'll make a video on me actually putting it to use in the future but as of right now this one's just going to be like a free version show off so we can get into the paid plugins and if you don't remember, we did go ahead and buy QWP on AppSumo. They're, they are running right now still, $49. You get a full suite of plugins. Uh, you get the QWP Front End Pro, QWP Payments, Inbox, Reviews and Ratings, and QWP Booster. Uh, you get Form, Social Login, Post Claim, and Wallet as well. All kinds of stuff. You, you get all kinds of stuff in this package. It seems like a very good deal, but when I bought it, I wasn't aware that they had a free version. They do have a very vast uh, free plugin, which allows you to do a lot of the things that uh, I thought was the paid version. So we're gonna go find out in this video what exactly it offers. And then in the next video, we're, we're gonna go through all the paid stuff. And it looks like they actually changed their back end. I just logged into the KubeWP back end. But it looks like they changed it up quite a bit. And they added all these extra ones, the social logins, the post claim, the wallet. Because when I bought it, I don't believe that was part of it. I think that's why they added it in separate down here. Yeah, they've added that in now. Uh, so we have even more to test. <laughs> This may be more than three videos. Who knows? It depends on how much uh, there is to go through and how long it takes. If the next video end up, ends up taking over an hour, it'll probably be split into multiple videos. So we'll see. Uh, but if we head back over to Crashtown, so we got CubeWP framework, and the only other things we have on here is a block editor for Cadence, a template editor, or a template for Cadence, uh, which is the theme I'm using. And that's just to get the website built and looking decent. And then WooCommerce actually just came with the template. Uh, so nothing's been done on this. It's a completely fresh install. And this is a fresh install of the free version of KubeWP. We'll be adding in the paid versions from the back end here. Uh, we'll probably do one at a time, add them as they go, kind of see what the differences are between as you add each one to the website. I don't know. We'll see how it feels when we get in there. Here's KubeWP, the back end. Looks like they have a little advertisement for their AppSumo deal up here, so that's awesome. So they're letting people know that they have it. I can imagine anyone using this is probably taking advantage of that. Welcome, Jake. Let's get started. Okay, let's start up top. So up top, we got the settings, the docs, the community, feedback, help desk, and then the AppSumo deal. Okay, and we're going to go through those in a second, and then we're going to go through the side. There is just so much to this thing. All right, so we got dynamic data structures here where you can create custom post creation with diverse fields, advanced fe features, and interactive content for better user experience. KubeWP is an end-to-end -end dynamic content framework for WordPress to help you shrink time and cut costs of development by up to 90%. Custom posts, custom taxonomies, and then you got custom fields over here. So for post type, taxonomy, user roles. Okay, so that's the dynamic data structure. And then we got the front end form builders, which is, uh, looks like it's all locked up. So I think that is the front end pro here. You got the front end dynamic layout manager also all locked up. So it looks like the free version is just the dynamic data structure. Pro version seems to be the logins and whatnot for your, your visitors. Now, again, I don't know for sure. This is brand new to me as well. Head on down, we got advanced robust set of features. Platform includes person-to-person -person messaging, lead gen, reviews, WooCommerce payments, social integration, email verification, and claims. We're going on the side here. So we got the KubeWP framework. Uh, I had to move the <laughs> camera and everything out of the way. Uh, how to build, uh, okay, this is the AppSumo shout out. And we got all short code cheat sheet, search form, search filter, saved post page. And then looks like everything else is on the pro version, so we'll explore that in the next video. Uh, six reasons to choose Cube WP Framework. Uh, frequently asked questions, okay. What types of dynamic content can I create with Cube WP Framework? You can create custom post types, custom taxonomies, custom fields, repeatable fields, and apply conditional logic, etc. Can I use my existing WordPress theme? Yes, that works on all free and paid WordPress themes. What page builders are compatible? All page builders are compatible with short codes, but using Elementor free and, or pro enables Elementor tags for custom fields content. How to display dynamic content on the front end. Default single page of post type, 
and archive slash search page supports full dynamic content plus display content on front end using short codes, widgets, page builder elements, and code snippets. Why should I get the Cube WP front end pro add on? Unlock advanced front end form builders for user signups, user profile, post submission, custom fields for search and filter, plus user dashboard and single post template editor. So if you're going to have any websites with uh, users being able to log in and do stuff on your website, you're pretty good much going to need the pro version, looks like. <clears throat> so the free version is basically your custom posts and your custom taxonomies, uh, which if you're not familiar with what that is, is instead of posts, you can have one, say, called reviews. And then in the reviews, the taxonomies of posts, for example, are categories and tags. So if you did one for reviews, for my website, I would do like software and like courses or something. That way there'd be two different taxonomies there. That's not, that's just an example, probably a very poor example because I mean, I've never even thought of using something like this. So it's kind of hard to imagine what could be possible. I mean, honestly, it seems the options are pretty limitless with something like this. It's just going to be controlled based on your imagination, really. You'll be able to do a lot of stuff with this from what I can tell. I think I might be losing my voice here. All right, so let's go over here. Actually, let's click up here. Let's go to the settings. Yeah, your general, your external custom post types into X, or cube WP builders. Enable if you want to add custom post types created by code or third-party plugins into cube WP builders. Settings, reset all. A search and filter section. And then you got a map. So you got to place the Google Maps API. And then you can set what kind of map you want. Open street, Google Map, uh, Mapbox API. Set map default zoom level, set map default latitude, and set map default longitude. Archive settings. Okay, nothing crazy here. Uh, here's the post settings. QWP single page, save button, share button, Twitter shares, Facebook share, Pinterest share, LinkedIn share, and Reddit share. Okay, so it's kind of got like a built-in social share system. All right, and then we got the author setting, author page template. If you have your author page template by any theme or plugin, then you do not need to enable this option. Otherwise, you can enable Cube WP author page template. Is that like the little author box at the bottom of posts or literally an author page as a page, like the about us section? When you activate it, you got your banner image, your share button, edit profile, contact info, select post types, Okay, so it automatically adds posts that they've done to their author page. That's pretty cool. User custom field. Is there a way to view this? I want to see what it looks like. User profile form page. I don't honestly know how to use that. I feel like this was one of those plugins that would take a very long time to learn. So just keep that in mind when you decide whether or not to, to jump in on this. So here's where you can add custom CSS and JavaScript. That's awesome. All right, so that's the settings up top. Let's go to documents. Looks like this is their support page if you want to learn a little more. I will definitely have to be digging through this if I'm ever going to put this to true work. I do like how they set it up by their plugins too. So you got the specific stuff for the free version, specific stuff for the front end pro, payments, inbox, reviews, booster, claims, social logins, and all of that. I love that they did that. It's, it keeps it clean. This looks really good. So you just click on getting started and it's going to walk you through the process of setting everything up. I like this. I mean, it looks fairly simple. I think they could have gotten into a little more detail. See, it tells you how to do the things, but it doesn't tell you why you would be doing it. That's, that's a big thing. I think most people that are going to be looking at this, because it's the first thing I wondered, is why? Why even bother adding separate posts and adding more taxonomies. A lot of people aren't going to see the benefit. And I, I am, I'm kind of one of those, I guess. Uh, I'm a blogger though, so keep that in mind. I don't ever, I really don't have a need for something like this. So in my experience, this isn't super useful, but the options it adds with everything are, I mean, I don't want to say limitless, but pretty darn close. You got a lot of options with this. Anyway, so let's head back over. You, they got their own community, so if you get stuck, looks like you have a community to go ask questions. It doesn't seem super active. Uh, looks like people are still posting on it. Looks like every week or so. This guy was just a day ago. So they do have a support. 
You got some feedback, so you can give them feedback on what you like, what you don't like. Okay, so it looks like they don't have Cadence Elements and Dynamic Block support yet, which sucks for me. I actually agree with this. Cadence Themes and Blocks are one of the best out there. Cadence plus w Cube WP would be a powerful combination, especially for designing archive and single post pages. So basically what he's saying there is he's already tried and they're waiting on Cadence. All right, and then you got a help desk here. You can submit a ticket. It's a very basic looking help desk. That doesn't really matter. And then you got your link to go pick it up on AppSumo. If you think this is something you will ever use in the future, it's probably something you should pick up because it is extremely cheap. 50 bucks for a lifetime and you get five website licenses. Not just one, you get five. That's all I got. I just got the tier one and I don't know. I don't think I'll ever go over by five, but if I do, shoot, at that point, it's worth paying them more money. I hope I put this to use in the future because it's really cool so far. So let's go over here to, I'm actually going to take me off the screen because I feel like I'm just getting in the way. There we go. Now we can see. So we went over here to post types. That's where we're at now. And it looks like they have some videos for you to watch. It actually looks like um, an hour one avatar. I could be wrong. Could be Synthesia, but looks like hour one to me. All right. So they got some basic videos explaining things. And to add a new post type, you just click add new up here. Add the slug. Give a slug for this post type, which will be used to get this post type data. Okay, so let's do, say, reviews, because that's the only thing I could think of right now. Okay, so we got to post a plural label and then a singular label and then a description. Okay, and then you pick menu item. Okay, so you pick the, the icon you want. We're going to do a, an expander icon because, well, when you're doing a review, you want to get a closer look at things, right? All right, so this is where you set up whether or not it can have a parent-child relationship. We'll use posts, for example. Uh, the posts taxonomies are uh, categories and tags. Tag, you can't have parent-child tags, but you can have parent-child categories. So, for example, say, I'm always using the fan niche, so we'll use that. So you got fans would be a category, and then ceiling fans would be a child uh, category underneath that. And then you'd have like uh, tower fans or pedestal fans, window fans, so on and so forth. They would all be under the fans. And then say you have heaters, you would have tower heaters, boiler heaters, or I don't even know. That's what they mean by heretical. We're going to do false on this one because I don't see reviews ever being or having a hi hierarchy of any type. Public. Whether or not posts of this type should be shown in the admin UI and is publicly queryable. I don't know what that means, but I think it means just open to people on the web or that just come to the website. I could be wrong there. It doesn't explain it here very well. Uh, show UI. Whether or not to generate a default UI for managing this post type. I don't know what that means either, unfortunately. We need some dummy proof buttons here for people like me. Uh, I don't know. I am not a developer. I've never thought about being a developer. Uh, I've, I don't build websites for a living. I'm probably pretty unqualified to be reviewing this product. But uh, yeah, so we're, we're doing what we can. Uh, show in the menu whether to whether or not to show the post type in the admin menu and where to show that. We'll go yes, true on that one. I don't know what show UI is, but we're going to go true on that one. We're, we're going to tr go true on public as well, and we'll just see what happens. Menu position. Now that's over here. So if we want it right under posts, which we do, we're going to put it right below posts. But we can put it anywhere over here on this menu, looks like. So we have options. But we're going to leave it below posts, so it's going to show up right about there somewhere. All right, show in nav menus. Whether or not to sh post this type in select navigation menus. Okay, cool. So you can put it in your menus. That's good. Uh, show in the admin bar. Make this post available via the admin bar. Maybe what that means is... When you're on the website, you got up here, you got this admin bar. I think that's what it means. And if that's the case, we don't necessarily need to show that up there. So we're at the admin bar. We're going to leave that on true. Uh, can you export it? Don't know what use this would be, but uh, we're going to leave it as yes for now. Uh, has archive. Uh, again, I don't know what the benefit or negatives of that will be. We'll just leave it as true for now. Exclude from search. Okay, so this if if you don't want it to show up on Google... You would put true here. That wouldn't make any sense to me, but that, again, that's, I'm sure some people would think that. Uh, publicly queryable, whether or not queries can be performed on the front end as part of the parse request. 
talking a different language, sets the query var, var key for this post type. Yeah, I don't know what any of this is, so we're just gonna leave it all base and hit save. Now we got the reviews up here. We can add a new one. URL structure over here. I'm not sure if you guys can see that on here. You got crashtown.com slash review slash auto draft. I actually kind of like that. It looks really good. So I'm not I'm not 100% against this as a blogger, but I'm, I'm not seeing the necessarily the benefits of it so far. If you guys can explain the benefits of using different post types, please let me know. I'm, I'm interested. I Specifically for a blogger's point of view, I don't necessarily see what the benefits would be. Now, if you're um, running a WooCommerce or something, I bet you'd be able to add like services and stuff like that. We added a, a custom post type. Let's move on to the next thing. We got taxonomies over here. But let's go ahead and add a taxonomy. Let's add it to reviews software. Since I review software, that would make sense. All right, and then we got advanced settings, public, true, yes, show UI, I don't know, show admin, I don't know, hierarchy, I don't, yeah, I guess, no, probably not, actually. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe you want to categorize it in different types of software, for example. So we'll leave that as true, and then you'd hit save, and now we got software. Okay, so here we go. Over on reviews, we got reviews, all reviews, add new, and software. Let's add another one. Okay, so, oh, and we forgot to do the post type again. So it has a nice little layout here. This is very easy to use. I'm not going to say it's dummy proof because I don't want, know what most of the options mean, unfortunately, but it is easier than I expected at first glance. Okay, so here's your custom fields. You get post types, taxonomies, user roles, and settings. I don't know what this can do. So yeah, let's go to custom post types, hit add new, see what we can do here. A group name. I don't know what this is. Well, let's just do test, give an order number for this group, which will be used to show an order. Give a name for this group, which will be used to show group data and meta boxes. Okay, so is this where you can combine stuff? Say if you want to find out how many pages and posts you have, uh, you would combine those here? Not sure yet. Uh, okay, so let's see if we can do two. So maybe, maybe that's a use for it. I don't know what you would use for this yet. I think that's my biggest problem here is I just don't understand what this could be used for. Okay, this is where we can add taxonomies to everything. <sighs> yeah, I don't I don't understand this. Let's go to user roles. And this is it looks like this is where you can just group your user roles as well. We don't want to do that. So this is just grouping, I guess. We'll do test setting. Not sure again. We'll do one, I guess, and add field. Yeah, I'm still confused as all get out. <laughs> this is, I'm sure this is something really cool. And I think I'm completely misunderstanding the point of this. Looks like you can add multiple fields. It's condition logic. Show this field if. Okay, so this is basically if then statements. I think it would be a little easier to understand if I knew what the hell the point of this entire section was for. But since I don't, I'm going to go ahead and delete these and see if I can save it. No, you have to add a field. Okay. All right, let's move on. We got search forms here. It looks like it's drag and drop. Um, again, I don't understand what this is for. I'm assuming to be able to add search systems to your website, kind of like on a marketplace style thing. And it looks like you can add it per different types of post. I mean, everything seems very easy to use. I'm not going to lie. I just don't understand what I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so you save changes. You now got a search form, which you can post anywhere you want by just using that code. You can just click the copy button, go to a post, post it in. So let's go ahead and add a new post and see what this looks like. Let's do a short code, paste. So there's our search we just created. All right, so we now have a search on a post. That's cool. Now we got a search filter. We add a keyword. Yeah, I think this is to set up your search system. Like say you add in services and you have a whole bunch of services and taxonomies inside there. Then you set up how to search for it in that search bar. I'm a little bit too ignorant for this, but looks like that is basically the extent of the free version. I think we clicked on everything. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't understand a lot of it. So feel free for anyone that does know what the hell they're talking about. Post in the comments down below, let us know. Um, I'll hopefully be able to look at that before I get into the next bit. 
looks like here's your export and your import options. You can pretty much export and import everything. So that's really cool. Yeah, I think this is one of those ones where I'm just going to have to play with, around with it for a while and see what can be done. Probably, I just don't have any ideas, that's all. I have no idea what I could do with that outside of doing something like a taxonomy for my my current website over at Marketing Reviewed. I could totally do that. I just don't see the value of it is all. I'm not sure what difference that's going to make between that and posts. And even then, couldn't I just add a taxonomy under posts instead of just making a huge or a whole new post type? I don't know. Unanswered questions. If you guys have any of those answers, post down in the comments. Let me know what you think about CubeWP so far. This is the 100% free version, by the way. So go check it out. Download it on your website. Play around with it a bit. And uh, let me know what you guys think. And we'll have the paid ones out next. Probably going to do Front End Pro first. And depending on how much it adds, they may be multiple videos or it could be one big video. We'll see. Looks like we got quite a bit more to uh, install. We got Front End Pro, uh, Inbox, Payments, Reviews, Booster, Social Logins, Post Claim, and Wallet. All of it sounds pretty cool. Can't wait to dive in, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.